All right, well, coronavirus cases and hospitalizations keep dropping. But so-called long COVID still remains a very big concern. Chances are you know someone who made it through the virus, but symptoms may have returned weeks or even months later. It can be debilitating and there are so many unknowns, but there is help available. And one woman says a new program at a local hospital changed her life. Channel 2's Michael Wooten takes us inside the ICU in this Two on Your Side original report. It's still very difficult. Inside Kenmore Mercy Hospital. We still have people coming in daily, critically ill and dying from COVID. The pandemic rages on. There are fewer new COVID patients coming in, but the death toll is still staggering. The fact that we are losing over 2,000 people in the United States of America to this virus every day is just an incalculable and devastating loss. And as numbing as that number is, critical care pulmonologist Dr. Michael Goff asks that you consider this. An estimated 31 million American adults have so-called long COVID symptoms. There are so many questions and there's so much fear and there's so much frustration. In October, the World Health Organization officially defined long COVID, the condition described in these 88 words. For Kara from West Seneca, it's much more complex. About a year and a half ago, I had uh, COVID very badly. Thankfully, she recovered from the initial infection, or so she thought. Her COVID symptoms returned. At first, it was nothing I thought like a cold. She ended up in the emergency room, the doctor telling her she'd had a seizure. And I said, COVID can do that? And he says, COVID can do anything it wants. She developed inflammation throughout her body, extreme pain, fatigue, memory loss, and eventually encephalitis. The disease started to attack her brain. It got so bad. I wanted to go to God because it was so awful. I told my husband, if it doesn't let up in six months, I could not live. Dr. Golf has seen all sorts of long COVID cases, some more severe than others, all troubling. For some people, it's that their asthma is worse after they get COVID or they now have asthma after they get COVID. But there are all kinds of symptoms that we see long term. There are behavioral health issues and, and, and mental health concerns that linger after COVID as well. ICU nurse Mary LaMartina has heard it all. A lot of what the patients say is I go to my primary care and they tell them symptoms I'm having, like I feel foggy, I can't function, I'm not myself. And they are typically said, well, just give it time, it'll be better. Mary shared those stories with her colleagues on the palliative care team at Kenmore Mercy. And out of a meeting came the idea for a COVID support group. I said, you know, this is, we should we should do this for the community. And that's and that's exactly what happened. Kathy Keneally is a patient advocate at the hospital. We didn't know what we were gonna do, so we thought, you know what? What the heck? We're gonna throw it against the wall and see what sticks. Who is welcome at this support group? All are welcome. Dr. Golf advises on the medicine, a tall task with new headlines and new research coming out daily. Mary and Kathy share resources, set up doctor's appointments, bring in guest speakers, but they all try to leave most of the talking to the patients. Mostly it's just listening to people's stories, trying to help them and just support them any way we can. Did it help you to know that, that there are a lot of people going through this? Um. Yes, that it did help me to know, but I felt horrified that there were this many and in pain and not finding the answers because everything was scattered. How has this group helped you? It gives you hope. It gives you resources and tips on treatment and ways to cope and, um, you know, sharing your stories, not feeling alone. Um, that connection that you need is there. It must make you feel good knowing that there are people who have already been helped by this. Yes, I absolutely love this group and I'm so excited to recommend it to anybody in the community. And it's not just for people suffering long COVID. Some who attend lost loved ones to the disease or are struggling in other ways. It's a broad and poorly defined mission <laughs> statement, but we're here to help however we can. Kathy has been a social worker for decades, but she's never seen a group this impactful. That's a powerful thing to say. Mm -hmm. Their struggles are many, um, but they're fighters. They're, they're all fighters. Fighters like Kara, who is slowly but surely getting better. Knock on wood, I keep going a little bit more. Each day I, I push it. Parts of me are even stronger and wiser, and I am better physically too which is a, an amazing thing.
Mm. So this group actually just had its most recent meeting earlier today. In fact, if you want to go to the next one, uh, we're going to have all that information posted on our website, along with links to a lot of resources. This is making such a big difference for people like Kara. It was fascinating to hear her story. We're glad she's doing better. Um, but they're actually going to take this idea and kind of copy it, and they want to create another support group for associates at the hospital. Think Smart the nurses, move. the doctors, all of the staff who have just been living this nightmare for almost two years now. There is so much about that protein, that spike protein that we don't know what it does long term for people. Yeah, these people are, are living through so many unanswered yeah. questions and they hope to get some of that relief. Yeah, good to know that resources there. Thanks, yeah. Michael.